Okay, let's close out this chapter by looking at heat transport by the ocean. Uh, there are uh, equations are going to be similar in terms of looking at zonal mean meridional transports, but the ocean uh, has boundaries, as I mentioned before, which is going to make a remarkable difference in the uh, patterns of heat transport. Uh, in the first part of the course we looked briefly at how ocean currents tend to be intensified on the western boundaries. We have the Gulf Stream, the Kuroshio, uh, the Brazil Malvinas current. Uh, Indian Ocean is a bit tougher because of the uh, monsoonal circulation to the north, but you have the East Africa coastal current here, uh, East Australian current here, and so on. And ocean has uh, these unique circulation features, what we call the global conveyor belt or the thermohaline circulation. We talked about uh, deep water formation in the North Atlantic and in the Southern Ocean, Ross Sea, Weddell Sea, and so on. So that water sinks the blues here are the cold waters flowing at the uh, bottom and intermediate depths, which comes into the Southern Ocean, uh, makes a, a few circles depending on various factors because the Southern Ocean is a challenge, uh, I mean, is a channel, and that water uh, inundates the uh, Indian and uh, Pacific Oceans gets converted to surface water and then flows back out through the Indonesian seas, mixing here in the Indian Ocean across the Agulhas here back to the regions of sinking. Um, this obviously plays a big role in the uh, heat transport by the ocean as well. So keeping all that in mind, <coughs> we'll look at, uh, look at heat transport in the ocean again as the mean A bar, time mean, 1 over uh, H, the depth of the ocean from the bottom to the surface of ADZ, any particular quantity. A prime again can be defined as the total value minus the time mean, so we have the uh, transient eddies formulation that we looked at. It turns out that the eddy contribution in the oceans uh, has not been uh, found to be significant as of yet, uh, but these are uh, based on very sparse data and models that uh, are not necessarily resolving the eddies uh, completely. So keeping that in mind, we write the time average and the spatial average as the multiplication of the two terms, time space average, uh, plus the uh, uh, stationary and trend, uh, so stationary eddies averaged in time, the product V bar star, T bar star, uh, averaged over space, depends on what you mean by zonal averaging here, different than the uh, atmosphere. You can also do it for the global ocean just to see. Uh, doesn't matter so much. Uh, this is the uh, transient eddies uh, averaged over space. Uh, what we call meridional overturning circulation. This is the so-called barotropic contribution. So the ocean has uh, vertically averaged transport just like the atmosphere that we looked at. Uh, and this term here is basically going to cancel out because in the uh, closed basins well, there has to be mass conservation. So if you uh, have water going north, then there is uh, some amount of water that has to flow back, same amount of water that has to flow back over the averaging periods to conserve mass, uh, which is uh, not something we worry about in the atmosphere because it's global. So that term goes to zero, and then you have the so-called Ekman components near the surface, the frictional boundary layers forced by created by the wind forcing and the friction near the surface and the bottom friction uh, and the boundary layer at the bottom. Um, and you have, of course, the diffusion term that is related to the meridional temperature gradient uh, with a diffusion coefficient and the radius of the Earth for uh, scaling. So obviously looks uh, different and yet quite similar. 
Looking at the global meridional heat transport in petawatt again, you have multiple estimates here, and this is from Ghana Show and Wunsch from 2000, where they took, uh, let's say, temperature and salinity data, and they do what's called inverse modeling. What is inverse modeling? Basically, if you take a section, let's say, from uh, South America to Africa, you can integrate things from the top to the bottom and see what is the amount of heat that is going through and what is the amount of heat that is transported in the upper ocean, what is coming back below. So you can look at warm waters transporting heat northward, cold waters transporting heat southward, the net transport across any latitude line anywhere you can draw. There are some open boundaries, of course, uh, but here you can think of it as whatever is going north and whatever is coming south. Um, so the net transport is going to depend on how much is going north as warm and how much is coming back uh, as cold and so on and so forth. So those kinds of details are all taken into account. So inverse modeling basically takes the data that is well constrained and tries to estimate the transports that can produce the observed temperature and salinity, for example. Okay, So zonally integrated heat transport in the ocean based on observations and inverse modeling. This figure is from Ghana Show and Wunsch. Uh, so they call this the present work there. So you can see that this one has uh, quite a bit higher value in the northern hemisphere around 20 north, but all of them have somewhat similar uh, structure in the sense that the ocean transport maximizes somewhere in the tropics and then this one is only estimating in uh, the uh, subtropics. So this one goes to uh, very low values near the pole. This one does the similar, uh, a similar thing here and so on. So you can see the estimated w values in petawatts uh, here. This is going northward at 0.7 petawatts uh, plus minus 0.3. So there's a high uh, uncertainty there. There is a cross-equatorial transport that is needed to satisfy the Tamohelan circulation constraints. So you can see that the estimate from reference 29 is 2.3 uh, plus minus 0.4. So that uncertainty is a little bit lower than here, but it's still fairly significant. And then you get northward transport of 1.1 plus minus 0.2 uh, up to this latitude and then 0.6 plus minus 0.1 uh, over here. So the point is to remember that uh, the, the red line and the green line here have different shapes, different amounts, different latitudinal peaks and so on and so forth. So ocean remains complicated. Looking few, at few more numbers, you can see this is again from Ghana Show and uh, Wunsch, meridional and vertical transports in different regions of the world ocean. Uh, the numbers in boxes denote meridional transport in petawatts. Horizontal bars represent vertical transports uh, to the left uh, is downwards. So if uh, arrow is uh, pointing in the horizontal, uh, sorry, uh, horizontal bar uh, going from the origin towards the uh, left is downwards and if it is going from the uh, line to the right very few uh, to the right here that would be upward okay so I'm not going to go through all these numbers but inverse modeling with uh, the uncertainties allows them to estimate uh, northward uh, transport of 0.5 petawatts with uncertainties here that are uh, fairly large and southward transport of uh, 0.5 uh, petawatts. Okay, so you can see there are uh, transports through the Drake Passage, uh, there is transport here uh, across from the uh, Indian Ocean side into the Pacific and okay here is one that is uh, upward uh, so you have water uh, uh, heat being 
pulled up by ocean circulation and so on. So this one here uh, goes to zero, this one here goes to 0 0.6. So you know where the water sinks and where it rises and those are going to determine uh, the scale is given here as one petawatt. So you can see larger than one petawatt. So you can see the Indian Ocean is uh, near surface pushing out uh, the uh, Thermohaline circulation part in the Pacific is bringing 1.4 petawatts here and this is going north to feed the North Atlantic deep water formation. So just remember the physics of it and let's not uh, worry about the details. Uh, the parameterizations again are done similarly as we will see uh, in a minute. Zonally integrated meridional heat transport for the whole ocean and the Atlantic. So that's the bold line uh, and the total, sorry. So um, and contributions by eddies, so the thin line. So you can see that the equatorial region has uh, large eddy contributions diverging from the, uh, sorry, converging into the ocean region because this is negative, so southward, this is positive, so northward, so energy is uh, uh, converging here as opposed to the total transport which is diverging. Okay, so the Atlantic Ocean has to have northward transport because of the deep water formation taking heat south across the equator but you can again see eddy contribution is fairly sol s uh, small. Components of eddy fluxes namely x, y and z components of eddy fluxes of horizontal momentum, eddy fluxes of heat and eddy fluxes of salt here again uh, parameterized as horizontal, uh, vertical and uh, oops. Uh, so X and Y horizontal and different for uh, thermal and for momentum as you can expect and for uh, salt. So any momentum flux in the X and Y direction so du dx and dv dy, uh, du dy and dv dy get uh, um, advected or diffused, eddy momentum flux in the z direction depending on du dz and dv dz uh, and similarly for temperature and salt, eddy heat and salt flux in the x and y directions and in the z direction. What is telling is that the value for eddy viscosities and eddy diffusivities in ocean models of, of coarse resolution uh, have a large range. Typical values of uh, horizontal eddy uh, viscosities uh, and diffusivities, you can see that it ranges from 10 to the 1 to 10 to the 5 meters squared per second. Often they are used as tuning parameters to fit the Atlantic meridional overturning circulation and so on. So depending on where you are, the meridional uh, heat transport and uh, diffusivities are going to be quite different. So in the vertical, you expect numbers to be very small. Uh, Crossing isopycnal surfaces uh, are uh, not easy. You need energy to mix across. So 10 to the minus 5 to 10 to the minus 1 meter square per second, enormous range. Um, this is for uh, horizontal and vertical diffusivities for uh, heat and salt. So 10 to the 3 to 10 to the 4, 10 to the minus 5 to 10 to the minus 4. So the ranges in the vertical here for temperature and salinity are smaller or better constrained, let's say. Okay. So we will leave it here. Uh, obviously ocean heat transport is very important. It seems to do most of the work in the low latitudes. At high latitudes the values seem to drop off and the eddy contributions in the ocean are uh, small compared to the atmosphere especially and the ocean has boundaries so the uh, structures and values of uh, transport by the ocean uh, processes are remarkably different from those uh, in the atmosphere. Okay, so let's leave it there and then move to the next chapter to look at uh, additional uh, uh, issues of climate modeling and uh, processes and representations. Um, now higher and higher resolution uh, models are being run even uh, at 
or 10 kilometers uh, in the horizontal globally. Vertical resolutions have also increased because the computational power has increased. The realism of the models have increased. So many more estimates are being made of eddy fluxes and there are also more observations now, for example, in the Crochu extension, which allow people to at least in a zonal band estimate the uh, eddy uh, transports by the ocean and the debate continues but they may not be as small as uh, uh, what we are uh, arguing here but that remains pretty much an open question along with the values of the eddy diffusivity and eddy viscosity coefficients okay